156th Contact Sunday, December 13, 1981, 11.14 p.m. Billy says man, I must already say, you venture rather far forward, my friend. Quetzal says the women are, indeed, in Eva's office and are talking with each other. Billy says that you visit me here in the lounge, however, I find it a bit dangerous. Quetzal says I have my protective device with me, as you see. Billy says of course, but if someone comes in here? Quetzal says then I'm gone in a split second. Billy says logically yes. Come, then sit down here with me. I won't turn off the television, that way, no one will hear us talking. Quetzal says your idea is good and you have it quite comfortable here. Billy says I like it, I feel cozy here. Quetzal says that's the right name for it. But now, I didn't come here to talk about these things with you. Billy says I supposed so. Quetzal says on last Monday, I didn't have enough time to explain everything to you more precisely, which is why I would like to repeat everything to you again. Billy says I know, you came just to tell me that the High Council has actually given its affirmative advice. Quetzal says that is of correctness the High Council is affirmative in its advice about all the concerns, as they were discussed between you and me on the 6th of December, regarding our proposals of the efforts toward Ingrid and Ferdinand. Therefore, we will fully exert ourselves and, therefore, begin our work as soon as Ingrid begins the wait time for her registration in the centre. Billy says then this will, indeed, be quite soon, but now, What's with Elizabeth? I think that she shouldn't be part of a friendship with Ingrid and Ferdinand. Quetzal says she has a lot to change in herself and has to become of another sense. Her instability and uncertainty will, nevertheless, certainly let her decide at this time. This saves us all sorts of hassle and extra work. The better way is that first of all, she tries to change herself according to your suggestions, in order to find a clear way for herself, and indeed one that is free from the clutches of Ingrid and Ferdinand, who want to bind Elizabeth to themselves by all means. Billy says that's all right with me. Quetzal says the concerns around Ingrid and Ferdinand and their children also aren't simple. You must be clear to yourself about this. Billy says of course it isn't easy, and it will be a very hard time. You did, indeed, speak of 11 to 17 years that that they need, in order to be changed for the better. Quetzal says that is of correctness. But in order to relieve you of something, Ingrid should be the person of implementation for Ferdinand, while also the children fall into her care. Billy says by that, you mean that Ingrid is, so to speak responsible for Ferdinand? Quetzal says that is of correctness, but her responsibility won't be easy. We must also impose the condition on her that in the future, she points Ferdinand to the right way, in terms of manual activity, so that he learns to work properly. Billy says you must explain that further because I don't understand your speech. Quetzal says I speak of the fact that Ferdinand isn't exactly thrilled by regular and employment strong manual activity. His mind is less focused on manual and profitable labor than on a leisurely life with light work and light effort. Billy says you mean that he doesn't like to work? But nevertheless, he has his own farm and manages this. Quetzal says have you ever observed him there? Billy says how could I? I was never with him at his home. Quetzal says then you don't know it, of course, but I have thoroughly occupied myself with him. His mind isn't geared toward the daily and exhausting work. With my daily 16 working hours, I'm doing several times his daily activities, and in comparison with your daily performances, he disappears from the point of comparison. But this has been the case throughout his present life. It is, therefore, our condition that he corrects this deficiency as soon as possible and learns exhaustive manual activity. This is of urgent necessity for the later and following time. 
This will even be of vital importance if everything is regulated in such a way as what we expect from him and if he can be utilized for everything, for which we want to see him be utilized. But presently, he still stands at the null point, with the mistaken idea that he only has to shape his life spiritually and in a knowledge-related manner. In truth, however, this is an erroneous and dangerous view, for he can shape his life only spiritually and in a knowledge-related manner just as little as anyone else, so even you and we cannot do that. If you or we or the earth human beings want to develop spiritually and in a knowledge-related manner, then we could only do this if we also exercise our manual activity in the best way. This is, in fact, not only necessary for livelihood but also for the right shaping of the teaching and its processing and effects. If a human being and also we want to live and learn in accordance with the teaching, then we also have to perform sufficient manual activity, otherwise, things will get confused and the teaching will become a failure. Billy says that is known to me, and I myself know well enough that I can never learn properly if I am not manually active enough. I need hard work quite often, and that in our not too scanty form. Quetzal says that is of correctness because the greater the quantity and the difficulty levels of the learning material are, the greater is the need for physical activity. This is also the reason why you can often work for days and without sleep, without getting tired. Billy says that's interesting, and I actually didn't know that. Quetzal says it is, however, actually so, as your body demands this activity in this measure, although, your concentration also contributes a lot to your achievements. But this also means that you learn much more intensely than I do, which I must admit with shame. You also prove this over and over again. Billy says but now, make a point. Quetzal says my words correspond to the truth. Billy says you make me wonder, since before, I know that I worked a lot more than I learned. Quetzal says that is of correctness, and that also has its reasons learning activity is enhanced by a prior learning of manual activity. In order to bring your learning capacity and your learning activity to the necessary state, it was only necessary for you to promote and train this through persistent and prolonged manual activity, which you have done, nevertheless, to an unusually large extent. And since you still continue to increase your learning capacity and your learning activity steadily, it is also necessary for you to exercise your manual activity in the necessary measure, which, together with your strength and concentration, makes you capable of achievements that must appear to the earth human beings as animal-like or at least as Quetzal says that is of correctness on the one hand, you, like every other human being, pursue an ongoing study during the exercise of manual activity, but on the other hand, you know very well that learning activity doesn't rest during sleep if the human being prepares for it. But furthermore, and you also know this, the speed of learning capacity and learning activity multiplies according to the evolutionary state of a human being. This, however, is well known to you, which is why I am surprised that you ask me about this. Billy says I just wanted you to give an answer for our group members. Quetzal says I understand, then I must also mention in regards to this that even with the group members, the necessary study isn't pursued in many cases for trivial reasons of fatigue, which can truly be combated if only the normal manual activity is exercised. Billy says I think, however, that also with greater achievements, a lot can still be learned. Quetzal says that is of correctness, but we can only impose this obligation on ourselves, but not on the group members. They haven't matured enough for this yet. Billy says you take the wind away from my sails rather damn nicely. I already thought that I could make some wind with this. Quetzal says you aren't being serious with this. Billy says it's just that you also notice everything. Quetzal says we must turn again to the issues that were raised in Gred, thus should be responsible for Ferdinand and take him under her care. For him, I also calculated the necessary data and have come to the conclusion that his manual activity has to amount to a daily time of 11 and one half hours. 
Billy says and what kind of activity should this be? Quetzal says that is his decision, but it is imperative that the activity to be chosen by him is strictly of a physical nature. Billy says thus, so to speak, a hard cramp. Quetzal says that is of correctness, it is necessary for him. Billy says wait a minute, yes, then his study time, after the end of work, would be for one hour and twenty-six minutes, according to which his whole workday would be finished after twelve hours and fifty-six minutes. Quetzal says yes, that corresponds to the correctness, even though he will find little pleasure in it. That he holds to this, however, is our condition. But under your and Ingrid's supervision, he will be able to bear this burden. Billy says you have hopes. Quetzal says it will be controlled by us. Billy says and how are things with Ingrid? Quetzal says her achievements don't have to be increased. Billy says that is very reassuring just when I think about her children. Quetzal says I also feel very reassured. Billy says I just ask myself whether everything is actually good. On account of Ingrid, I have no concerns but Ferdinand worries me, after what you've told me now. Quetzal says he has to decide himself. Talk to him, after which I will then get in touch with you, in order to receive the reply no later than December 22nd. Billy says OK, I'll talk to him. But now, I have a question for you, which gives me a headache in our group. There are several who can't be properly classified into the close association of the Codex members and there are also some who are Codex members but who haven't grown into their duties or who simply can't cope with them. As it now stands with this will we be able to manage our task and mission anyway or do we have to expect that everything can't work out? And what about the fighting among each other, is there an improvement in the whole thing? Quetzal says in all of the things that you mentioned, you can rest easy, because according to our investigations, everything is turning to the good. You will, however, sweep with an iron broom and will have to create order with a lot of exhausting toil and trouble, by what means you will also destroy your health to such an extent that you will collapse and your life will be endangered, which will occur in the early morning of the 4th of November, 1982 when you suffer a severe collapse that will hold you down for several years and from which you can never completely recover again. For years, you will be closer to death than to life, if you can make it at all, which is very doubtful and is still open, despite our clarifications. But I also didn't know this until today, my friend. Nevertheless, You've already set up everything in such a way that your work takes effect and that the determinations are beginning to be fulfilled. Thus, by the end of 1989, all group members, who are not Codex members or who have not grown into the responsibility of the duties and the mission and who cannot bear or cope with these, will have left the group, and indeed, either by their own desire or by our arrangement. Of those, however, there will be several, so the group will be fairly decimated, but this will do you no harm because Codex affiliated group members will come to the group and enrich this as valuable members, by what means by the end of 1989, at the turn of the year, there will already be more group members than there would have to be according to determination. Billy says that's nice to hear. But may I also know who the new members will be and when we may expect their appearance or entry? Quetzal says certainly, but about that and about what was said, you must remain silent for so long until everything has arisen in such a way. In 1982, Hans Benz will appear again, whom you know, then also Brunhilde Coy. Christina Gasser should appear in this regard in the year 1986, as well as Elizabeth Krieger, who is the destined marriage partner of Guido Musbruger. In 1987, Hans George Lanzendorfer should appear, who will have a relationship, in accordance with destiny, with Barbara Harness, who should belong to the group as of 1989. In 1987, Christian Frenner and Edith Beldy should also join the group, as well as Brigitte Clara Keller. In the same year, Piero Petrizo will also be joining the group, who, together with Gilgamesh, will have a determination to show. In the same year, 
Wolfgang Adolf Stolber should also be joining the group, who will marry Philia Christine Gabriel in accordance with Destiny, who will have already found her way into the group in the year 1986. In the year 1990, Andreas Schuppiger and Simone Julian Holler should then find their way into the group community. Billy says well, I now know the names and the years, but where will I find everyone and who and what are they? Quetzal says I'll explain that to you some other time and in confidence, for the related personal interests should only be known to you. Thus, they should never be written down. Billy says of course it's a matter of confidence, that's understandable. Quetzal says that is of correctness. With that, my friend, I think that I have fulfilled my obligation to provide information once again. Billy says certainly, and I will abide by the secrecy, so that everything can develop as planned. Quetzal says silence is a hard duty when one knows a lot of important things. But you will fulfill your duty. Billy says okay. Quetzal says it is the High Council's and our advice and determination, if everything should have its correctness in the future time. Billy says of course, my friend, and if all this must be so, then I certainly won't stand back and will also fulfill my duty in every respect. I have taken over my mission and have also fulfilled my duty to this day at least I hope and so it will also be in the future without my having to make a special promise for this. Of that, my friend, you may be sure. Quetzal says you are a man of knowledge from our own ranks and you know your duty and the mission, in order to fulfill it. We are committed to the earth human beings for reasons that are well known to you, which is why we must allow assistance to be given to them. We may neither let them fall into oblivion nor let them sink into an evil end. Billy says of course not, which is why I'm doing my job, just as you are. Quetzal says our mission, however, isn't progressing in the way that it must. The earth human beings are so blinded by their misleading religions that they resist the truth by all means. This brings with it that your group currently isn't growing and doesn't have group members in the intended way, as it would be necessary. For this reason, we have devised a plan that will, nevertheless, still lead the mission to success. It is the proposal that we've presented to the High Council, that it should establish new alliances which generate the most important group members from their own ranks. But on this occasion, we had to issue some regulations that would have to be followed. For descendants, we, in cooperation with the High Council, would determine the spirit forms that would be of correctness for the mission and the mothers concerned, etc. without exception, however, the spirit forms would be those who are of Loran origin and who remained here on the earth after the deaths of their former bodies. Therefore, the only descendants who would be born would be those who are inspirited with original Loran spirit forms. Everything would have to be managed by the Arahat Athasatha level. Billy says that sure is something, man oh man. But on the other hand, there could only be three descendants per 100 years, since you, together with the Arahat Athasatha, have only created the possibility to manipulate three spirit forms in this way each 100 years. Quetzal says that was the case, my friend, through the help of the High Council, however, the possibility has been given to us together with Arahat Athasatha, to take and put through determinations in this way in an unlimited number. Billy says incredible. The High Council and Arahat Athasatha would have to be one. Quetzal says we will also attain this form someday. Billy says that is clear to me, but until then, there is still a damn long and hard path. Quetzal says that is so. Billy says of course, but a couple of years will, indeed, also still pass just about 50 or 60 little billions. I console myself in this, however, when I remember that the earthworms still have to wait many billions of years longer. Quetzal says your humor is strange. Billy says your explanations are, indeed, no different. Quetzal says I'll explain the details to you later, for now, I must go. Until we meet again. 
Billy says you're in a great hurry, oh, I understand, someone's coming. Bye, and come again into our good lounge. Greet Semiaza, Patar, Manara, and all others including the new Black Roses. The End